Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to International, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. All right, welcome to Ball and Play, episode number nine. Thank you for joining the show. My name is Sesma. I'm your host. This is brought to you by Baseball News Club. You can locate Baseball News Club at Instagram and also our big channel, YouTube channel, has every team that you can think of, Major League Baseball, every playlist that you need. We have everything for you. Uh, this is episode number nine. We got kind of a short episode today because not much is going on in baseball. Um, but first off, let's thank our followers. Please subscribe. Please comment as we go through this. Uh, we want to thank our Pandora followers. We got a lot of them out there. I think almost 70% of our downloads lately have been Pandora. Thank you very much. iHeartRadio, Alexa, Apple Podcasts. Eee! And, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty popular all around the world. You know, we got uh, Korea, Canada, uh, Europe, Australia, United States. So we're getting hit up everywhere. And again, we want to thank every single one of you out there for following us and supporting us. We've got an action-packed show today, guys. I'm just going to run over the MLB lockout because there's really not much going on. There are some surprises, but we're going to, again, because what I told you guys last week, podcast, because of Major League Baseball, just screwing the pooch right now, not giving us what we want as fans, the ones that bleed and spend all our money on them. uh, We're just going to focus on college. Why not? And other things. So... We're going to talk a lot of college today, NCAA men's and women. Uh, I'm going to try to break it down the daily images or daily what's going on, like Wednesday, what happened at NCAA, Thursday, what happened, and then we're going to talk about top 25. Why not? Huh? Huh? Uh, Trevor Bauer's back in the news. The Angels back in the news. Rod, Ross Dip, Striplin. Fernando Tatis. Uh, more news on KBO, Nippin, schedules. Uh, Braves coach news, interesting there. And we're going to talk a little bit about stadiums. I might as well give you guys mix something up for you guys since uh, we don't have baseball, the jackasses, and uh, Major League Lockout. So let's just run over that real quick. This is our first item. Again, please comment, please subscribe, but uh, please comment on what you feel. Not necessarily my opinion because when I bring you guys a lot of this news, I'm pretty much on the fence. I'm just reporting it. I'm gleaming it off of other sources. I probably... I pull sources all week long, so I got my iPad, I'm keeping track of all my sources and news, so I try to bring you guys everything, but before I start about MLB, what's more important is all the little leaguers and softball players and even t-ball players out there listening, including the parents that are thinking, hey, I don't know if I want my kid to start this year, I don't know, you know what, get your kid out there with some blitz ball, get some kid out there, get your kid out there with some wiffle ball in the yard, you've got parks, help build their confidence, that's all it's about is... You know, they just want to go out and play, but, you know, if no friends or family are offering that opportunity to them, what do you expect? They need guidance. They need a leader. That is you. Duh. You're a parent. Whether you like it or not or whatever theme you live in in today's world, whatever hashtag you believe in, you're still someone that's helping somebody out. You're helping a young child raise, and baseball is the best sport in the world. I believe basketball is a great sport, too. I'm not a fan of football. Uh, I am a fan of watching. I'm not a fan of my kids being involved in it just because it's too dangerous as a sport. I love the sport. Don't get me wrong. But I think all of us admit that football, you know, brain damage is nothing cool. And I grew up in San Diego where Junior Seau shot himself due to brain damage due to football. So there's reasons why I'm behind that and why I support baseball. And not just that. Baseball is America's pastime. No matter how much the NFL tries to say they're America's sport, baseball is it. You look at baseball up and down. It is America's and the world sport. It is becoming, you know, soccer is very popular, or football, depending on what country you're in. But hey, man, baseball's right there in it. So, again, parents, if you have a kid that's on the fence, you got to get them out there. The whole thing is you don't force them. Just get them outside. You know what? Go outside and play catch. 
believe it or not, that is so underrated, overrated. I don't know what way you want to call it, but it's something I think that people don't really focus on. Playing simple catch is one of the best ways to be involved in baseball. I'm dead serious. What do you do before every game? You warm up with your warm-up partner. What happens when a warm-up partner cheats on you? You are bombed. you just like, dude, this is my warm-up partner, man. He cheated on me with another guy. We got a three-way going now. He's throwing him, and I'm throwing it to him. And All I'm saying is, <clears throat> you know the feeling. If you played the game, you know what I'm talking about. Rather softball, baseball, what it league, you throwing partners it. Um, I used to have family get-togethers all the time with my with my nieces, and we just go out and we'd throw. Uh, we'd be at a family get-together, and there's you know, a little tennis ball or something flying over the crowd of everybody because we're throwing it across to each other. Uh, we just love to throw. Again, that's something that helps me bond with my family. Um, but I'm just saying in general, as a parent, that's all you have to do. You don't need a park. You just need a driveway. Maybe not use a baseball in the parking lot of your apartments. Use a tennis ball. Use something. See, a tennis ball works because you still want your kids to get the touch of catching a ball. Uh, too many kids get involved in just throwing the glove up and closing their eyes. Tennis ball, you can throw it closer to each other and you can practice catching it with your catching hand and, you know, transferring it to your throwing hand. Also, it just teaches you good technique to catch it. When you catch it in a glove, I always wait to the last second myself. You know, when <clears throat> as an outfielder, I wouldn't be one of those guys running with my glove out, chasing it. I run, I always... This is how I was trained by a coach, and this is what I believe, and I've seen a lot of major league players do this. I would do a fielding practice with footballs. Uh, I wouldn't use a glove, but I was trying to use the idea of tracking a ball in the air. That's the whole purpose of using a football. So you're not throwing it like running routes. You're standing in position in outfield, and then you're having somebody just throw a normal football in certain areas, and you got to go to it. you got to jump to it. But, again, it's, it's about hand-eye coordination, it's about teaching how to use your hands as soft hands because you've seen players with lead hands, hard hands, stone hands, where no matter what they do, the ball hits their glove and it bounces out. There is a real art to catching a baseball. I don't think I've ever dropped in a baseball as long as I can remember. I'm dead serious. Um, I'd have to go back to when I was in high school. I don't drop baseballs. I have a technique. I wait till the last second. I run to the ball like I'm running. Just like I'm catching a football. I try to catch it like a football, and sometimes I catch it like a football in a basket in my arms as I'm running. I just It's easier for me to run down the ball and do practice techniques like that. Because, again, you got to teach them how to use your hands. So as a parent, again, if you're sitting there scratching your head, go, man, I don't know what to do with my kid or my nephew or my neighbor's kid. You know, that's all you got to do is just play catch. If you play catch, that will get them interested. It will build their confidence. So when they go to – tryouts and when they go do things these coaches are going to see how they how they stand how they catch how they recover the ball how they how they throw it back and forth they see those little tangibles but again it helps the younger person so again if you're out there on the fence hey even college even if you're like hey this semester i don't know if i want to keep playing hell no man keep playing man just baseball is a sport about individuality and team individual because you have to motivate yourself you got to get yourself out there you got to go grab that bat you got to go up to the plate it's, there's a million things that go on in the sport. That's why I love it. It's chess on the field. But Major League Lockout. Let's talk about that. Move on to that. First proposal since cancel games. Leads claims offer went backwards. So again, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Nowhere is getting anywhere with this whole process. But here's the weird thing. <clears throat> All This whole time during the lockout, what have we been hearing? Salary, salary arbitration, lower the years. For agency years. Um, luxury tax. You know, it's all about revenue sharing. You know, and all these different things. All these different things going on and all of a sudden now on March 6th, it's like, oh, now they want to discuss pitch clock, larger bases and shift restrictions. What the hell? Where? And that's coming from MLB. Again, this is what's irritating with MLB. When have any of us heard about a pitch clock, larger bases and shift restrictions? This is all they're basically talking about 2023. But I'm like, idiots, you can't even get that going. Worry about getting baseball going now. Don't worry about a year from now if you want to make the bases larger because you got a friend that runs a base company. You want to hook them up. Pitch clock. Okay, you guys should have been talking about that shit early on. Shift restrictions. I mean, come on, man. These aren't. In, this isn't a. This is the thing that bugs me. This is about the aesthetics of the sport or or defenses. This has nothing to do with what you guys have been complaining about. 
you guys have been complaining about this the revenue sharing you've been complaining you know i'm talking about the owner specifically and this just irritates me this really does because it's like you know what guys i get we got the you know they want to institute a 14 second pitch clock with the bases empty and a 19 second timer with runners on about you know they want to improve the pace between pitches listen man all i care about is get me some damn baseball on the field that sounds like to me when you're talking about larger bases when the hell's that ever come up in any game ever about bases what i don't understand that it larger bases what it uh, again i i just want to go bang my head against the freaking wall we just want baseball we don't give a shit about larger bases I don't think there's one single fan ever, ever that goes, oh, yeah, that's I've been arguing the whole time. Nobody's been listening. There's probably one fan out there that's just going, yeah, everyone's been ignoring him for years, and now his 15 minutes of fame are here. And he's going, yep, I've been telling you guys all along, we need bigger bases. Bigger bases. It's like, what the hell? So the, the, the recap of the recent proposal is the union lowered its request on pre-arbitration bonus pools. From 85 to 80, da, 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 the owners proposed 30 in a central fund, meaning the gap remains sizable, 50 million. So there you go. Got nowhere there. The union ceded no ground on its request for competitive balance tax, balance tax, or competitive balance tax. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. No one, you know, this is one of their hottest buttons, but it's like it began at 238 million. It grew to 263. The league countered with a threshold starting at 220. It slowly comes up to 230. So it's just this whole little, okay, I'm going to move this the stick this way and you're gonna move the stick that way well, i'm gonna move it back and you're gonna move it's come on guys jesus um the union also made no movement on its higher league minimum salary surprise there and they also want a draft lottery to determine the top six picks so they're you know what uh, again i'm going you know what if it's a draft lottery you know what i don't care about that right now get me baseball you guys still aren't getting me baseball and that's my problem you know, get give me baseball. You know, you know. Let's go on another subject real quick. I'm gonna we're gonna move on to other news. I was thinking about this in deep fashion. Major League Baseball, the show, MLB, the show. Uh, any baseball out there? I and I'm putting this out there, and I'm copywriting it right now. I really think they need to go further. I would like to do a career journey mode where you start off in T-ball, man, and you're just hitting T-ball. Maybe it's a little fun part of the game that's goofy, but you gain points. And then maybe it skips Little League and it just, for shits and giggles, you go to high school. You play one year of high school ball, whatever schedule, 20, 30 game schedule. And during that period, uh, you're going to get ranked and you're going to be drafted. You might get, uh, you might have to go to the minors. You might have, you might get a scholarship offer. All I'm saying is it'd be cool if MLB the show allowed you to play like that you do a little little league just for fun i mean obviously you could skip t-ball but obviously you got to pay a play a season of high school and then your performance will get you drafted scholarships minor league and then depends at the end of the high school season then you find out where you're going to go so maybe you have to go through the minor leagues for two seasons before you get to major league baseball but i want the system and the software to be able to measure my performance while i'm playing so that way I'm like, wow, man, I'm going to get drafted high in the draft. Uh, I might go to Baltimore. I might go to Atlanta. And then you, after you're going through minors or college and you get drafted, you know, that's probably four, four years of playing, you know, T-ball, high school, maybe a little college, four or five seasons. And then you get to Major League Baseball and you're a rookie. And you do all the rookie things. I think it'd be great if they went through the contracts the same way. At least create like a similar basic structure where you got to go two, three years of salary arbitration and, you know, free agency and all those things. That'd be neat if the game implemented that because I think the fans want that. And we need more saber metrics on our games. Uh, but it would be neat to go through that. And then after you go through a major league career, maybe you get the Hall of Fame. And then you're like, hey, you went to Hall of Fame. But I think it would be cool for me because I play the game every day. I play it on my Switch right now, which sucks. Uh, but because I can't get a PS5 like you and everyone else out there. But I just think it would be cool if they designed the show like that. So anyways, let's move on to other news. Because again, I'm going to zip through this. Uh, Nippin, uh, International Ball Nippin and uh, KBO Baseball. been telling you guys about this. Uh, schedules are out. They're already getting ready for... Um, they're already getting ready for their spring preseasons. Uh, I, don't, I can't call it spring training because it's not the same as ours. But, hey, uh, Puig's been training over there in the KBO. 
Uh, Nippins get ready to start up. So those are, you got baseball right there. And then, like I said, we are talking big college ball. Uh, and then Fernando Tatis Jr. is in the news. Tatis flirts with signing with Toro Tijuana LMB. Um, he's lit up a social network this week with the Tijuana Bulls. Uh, San Diego baseball player flirted with possibly signing with the organization of the Mexico, Mexican Baseball League, LMB, after it's become known that opening day has been canceled. Could it be that we'll see uh, Tatis in a Mexican jersey? And I've got this information, by the way. I'm gleaming it. i got to give a shout-out to D1 Softball News. Uh, yeah, Tatis, Universal. Everyone talks about everything with the stick and ball. So... The rival Major League Baseball players in Mexican baseball for the upcoming season seems to be a viable option. Um, I, I mean, I think we all understand this, that players just want to play. And, you know, if you've got your players basically getting to the point where they're going to go play in a Mexican baseball league or international league, and they don't, you know what I'm saying? That should tell you something as the owners of Major League Baseball. They're pretty much telling you, you can do whatever you want. We don't care. Uh, we're going to play baseball. We're going to bring it to our our fans because that's where we are. We're players. We're Again, I, I, don't, I don't understand how people don't understand that. These are, and that's the thing that makes me feel good inside that with the players and the owners right now, we've been talking about it for podcast after podcast. You've been seeing it in the news. Um, Players just want to play. And when you hear them talking, that's all they're talking about is how they want to play. But let's move on to some other news. Ross Stripling. This came out of fan side an article this week. He exposed MLB for awful negotiating skills, sketchy PR tactics. Oh, this is getting good. This is what we need. Um, so earlier this week, again, Rob, Commis- Rob Commissioner, Rob Manfred, Talking about how the first two series of season been canceled. Well, things have been really, I guess you can say, the players are starting to come out more and more and more. And Ross Striplin said, and I and I and I quote, I gotta be like 1230 in the fine print of their CB proposal proposal was stuff we had never seen before. They were trying to sneak things in through us. And it was like they were think we're dumb baseball players and we get sleepy after midnight or something. It's like a stupid football quote. They are who we thought they were. They did exactly what we thought they would do. They pushed us to the deadline that they imposed, and then they tried to sneak some shit past us at the deadline, and we were ready for it. We've been ready for five years, and then they tried to flip on it on us today in PR, saying that we've changed our tone and tried to make it look like it's our fault. That never happened. Yes, Rob Striplett. Cheers to that, brother. Thank you very much for giving us insight because, again, I hate getting news from just like, you know, it's kind of contradictory, but you're getting the news from me. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, When it comes to these, when it comes to news, um, that's straight from the horse's mouth, man. That's a guy that's involved in the negotiations, and that's a guy who is telling us straight up, this is what they're doing. And you know what? I believe it. And you know how it's proof? Look what just freaking happened. What did they introduce? Enlarging the bases and shift for 2023. It's like, dudes, focus on the money. Let's get players on the field. You can amend in the CBA. I've read it to you guys numerous times. There's amendments. If you're too young to understand what amendment is, amendments to the contracts are not set in stone. All, Dude, did, Jesus Christ, the Constitution had amendments everything has amendments it's all amendment is is like oh you know we need to add this but we had to add it at a later date we all agree upon it it's cool nothing's perfect the first time around and you'd have to question anything that's perfect first time around because nothing is so you can amend it you can this is what pisses me off with mlb you don't need to be talking about goddamn shift for 2023 let's get the players out on the field and then you can during the season you can discuss and amend it and you can create it a talking point. It works to your advantage as MLB. It makes you look good. It makes you look like you're negotiating with the players and working with the, the Major League Players Association. It's all so simple. But people that have egos that are just don't give a shit, this is how they that's how they act, like Major League Baseball. When you give a shit, then you sit there and go, you know what, guys? Maybe the 2023 discussions about the larger bases 
and a shift. Let's table that. You know, let's let's shelf that. And uh, I don't know. I got a bright idea. Let's get freaking baseball on the field. Let's get baseball back. Let's not worry about the goddamn shift right now. Jesus, man. They're like, I swear to God, man. The owners are like annoying little brothers. You just want to smack the shit out of them, you know? I understand how Goose Gossage feels, man. It's just getting to the point where it's just getting old, man. I mean, obviously, it got old a long time ago. But it's like, come on, man. Let's get this together. Don't worry about the damn shift. Amend that later. Let's get feet on the ground. Let's get the sound of Blue yelling, play ball. I want to hear the crack of the bat, the smack of the ball hitting the glove. That's what you're doing to me, Rob Manfred. And you know what? I'm going to hire Goose Gossage. Goose Gossage is my contract punch killer. He's going to come up and punch you. He's not going to kill you. He's just going to come up and punch you. Because that's what he wanted to do. We read that last week. Goose Gossage talked about that. That's crazy. But let's move on to other news. Okay, now we talk about the Angels and how they're the most drama team. And, you know, it, there's, I think sometimes when you look at why teams are drama, you got to look at the owners. Just because you're an owner doesn't mean you get the sport. You get it, but you don't. The LA Angels owner has been accused. This was on March 4th. Um, exposes a major contributor to the MLB lockout continuation. And it's just like, dude, really? You're the guy that's, well, then again, you know, you've got all this money poured into your team. You're, you're probably stressed right now. You don't want to pay anything. Um, but he's, he's one of the people that are, um, he's one of four owners that are opposing MLB luxury tax increase to 220. The other owners also oppose, uh, some other owners oppose the tax increase, but there's only four teams. It's the Angels, Diamondbacks, Reds, Tigers. They oppose the increase to 220. So again, he's kind of putting his mix in there. He doesn't want the luxury tax increased. And, you know, I kind of see his point. You're a big spending market. And the higher you go in the contracts that they have over there, I mean, Artie Marino, you're you're like the poster child. You are, honestly, he's like the, the poster child for luxury tax. His team spent so much damn money, he's one of those guys that gets dinged. He's one of those guys that is in fear of paying Luxury tax and luxury, luxury tax is no joke, guys. It, we've talked about this before. You need to look it up. You get into the radar for luxury tax. The next season, you pay more. And the next season, you pay more. It gets so bad that um, you're paying a boatload of money, man. You're, it can get really, really up to, I think, 25 40 50%. I mean, the teams are tagging you. The more you end up on the radar year, if you do a continuous years of being on the luxury tax radar and you're above the threshold and you're in their target range, you're going to be paying some money, man. Plain and simple. But let's move on to other news. Now, Trevor Bauer's in the news. He's always in the news. But hey, man, <laughs> what's baseball? You're not talking about Trevor Bauer. Hey, he's a great athlete. Again, love him or hate him. Uh, we're not going to get into his, if he's guilty or not, because we've talked about that. He is suing. Before actually, let me before I put the cart before the horse, this goes out to all you trolls out there, mainly. And, uh, and you, some of you guys have friends like this, and I know about trolls because I run uh, a YouTube channel. And you get these trolls out there, people with no videos, they have a fake name, and they're just out there to be little piss in the water of everybody's parade. Um, well, this is this is a direct. I guess, res not response, but this is directly aimed at you, you trolls. You can get your ass sued. So just because you can hide or try to create a fake account, you can still get your IP address. Doesn't matter if you use a scrambler. We can still track you down. And the thing is, you can get sued for what you're doing. Believe it or not, Google it. Go, go Google social media people being sued for defamation, uh, for slander, uh, stuff like that you there's laws you can't go out there let's say there's a real estate company and your friend works for his, his parents own that business and you don't like your friend you have a bad breakup so you bag that you, in social media you're like hey joe blows real estate company sucks they do drugs on the on their breaks they drink da, da, da. well that company if you're lying and you don't have proof we've seen this in the news a million times they can sue you so I don't care how old you are. That is what is going on a lot. And don't believe me. Go to your favorite search engine and look it up. If you're going to slander somebody in the news, and that's what I got to worry about too as a news person. But 
all my news is gleamed off of other news sources, but you got to be careful what you talk about. And Dodgers Trevor Bauer is case in point. He's suing Deadspin for defamation. This is big, dude. This is big. I remember months ago I told you guys there were certain social media places going, he ain't ever going to play again. Dodgers are never going to allow him on the team. All this information, like all the players don't want him back. Dude, you better have backup for that. And if you're a media company and you have people on your payroll, that's what I'm talking about. And that's what happened. And if you guys remember, 2016, this is a little side. Uh, retired wrestler Hulk Hogan won a lawsuit against uh, the parent company, uh, Gawker Media, resulting in bankruptcy and the sale of Deadspin and other assets to the group to become uh, GO Media. So, again, you drag somebody through the mud and it ain't true, you're going to pay for it. Um, so, in Thursday in the Southern District of New York, L.A. pitcher, because he's still a Dodger, Trevor Bauer accused Geo Media, the owner of sports and culture website, Deadspin, of defamation. Whoa. And this case follows other high-profile uh, media lawsuits like former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin and Barstool founder David Portnoy, which alleged bias and character assassination. So, this case does legal bring up a lot of legal questions regarding reporting, disclosures, personal information, but Bauer challenges Desmond's depiction of his culpability in alleged domestic violence incidents occurring last year. Bauer insists that Deadspin should, you know, basically, and I talked about this, and if you guys remember when I talked about this, I didn't say who these media people are, because I said there's a lot of people out there saying that he's never going to pitch again, he's done with MLB, but I didn't say who the companies are, so this is who I was referring to back then, it was Deadspin, and they said Trevor should never pitch again, even though they corrected it on the same, uh, corrected their stories on the same talk, topic, uh, he also names another author there that said something. So what basically Bauer is doing, he's, he's saying, hey, you know what? And you guys should have saw this coming. L.A. didn't, law enforcement didn't charge him with anything. MLB hasn't done anything. Uh, he's won twice in court with his, with the, um, not won twice in court, excuse me. He's won twice in a way. Uh LA is not going to charge him and her request for restraining order was denied. So Bowers 2 and up. There's nothing that shows he's not guilty of anything. According to the law's eyes, public opinion, a little bit different. We talked about that. However, it's going to be very interesting how major league baseball treats him. And I've already called it. It's like, this is my mass singer. I'm, I'm I know who the singer is. I really think the major league baseball is just going to suspend him. A little bit for his... I don't know how they can suspend it for a sex thing. I'm really not. But because she brought something up, I think they have to do something. But I think most of it's going to be due to his sticky balls. They're going to go after him for sticky balls. So, um, I don't know, man. You know, Deadspin made... I guess uh, Trevor's saying that they made uh, errors in the reporting. Untrue statements. Including that she had her skull fractured. He said that wasn't true. Um, he was also, you got to remember when Bauer came out, when we talked about it recently, when he came out and talked about what happened, Trevor was extremely blunt and he was very honest and you got to admire that man. I mean, guilty or not, he's not hiding anything. So he came out and said, Hey, I didn't punch her. I didn't hit her, you know, and the things that were accused of him. So, Hey, you got to expect that to come. So let's move on to other things. Um, UniWatch blog. Awesome blog. If you guys aren't aware of it, go Google UniWatch. You'll find out when you get there. It's good times. Every fan should be playing at UniWatch. Uh, buddy I work with, Zach, he introduced me to that. Thank you for that information. Again, we're here up to rise up everybody. doesn't matter if you're a bigger meteor conglomerate or smaller than us. If you guys follow us, we follow everybody. We support everyone that's involved in the sport of baseball or anything with softball and a ball and stick. So, boom. Um... Billets ball leagues. I've been seeing some leagues pop up and some wiffle ball leagues popping up. Um, so that's exciting. Um, Cause that's what you get to do. Baseball's down guys. Go outside, throw a ball back and forth, play some sports. But uh, what I've seen is John boy, actually they've been playing games and I've been wanting to see this. Cause uh, every time I see blitz ball about 95, 98% of the time, it's just friends pitching the friends seeing if in oftentimes I got it. 
I gotta call it out there. There's a, a lot of overhype on Blitzball uh, on social media, and I see it all the time. And the reason I could tell is I look at the batter at the plate. The batter doesn't even know how to play most of the time. He's holding the bat weird. It's just like some goofy kid. And then sometimes you get some high school guys in there, but they're not swinging. Dude, swing the bat. There's no such thing. I don't know. I'm just, it's sometimes a little overhyped. But what I love is John Boy recently posted something this week about them playing an actual game in a warehouse. And there's fielders and there's pitchers. and It's an actual game. That's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, it's just a gimmick to me if all you're doing is throwing it. You got to be able to field teams just like wiffle ball and play games. And, uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, John Boy, that looked fun. That looked a, a lot of fun. Actually, I'm ordering my Blitz Ball package. I I got it on my tablet. I just got to order it. I've been lazy, but it's three balls and a bat. So I'll be posting Blitz Ball stuff soon. I like it. I think Blitz Ball is super cool. But at the same time, it's to me, it's just a gimmick if you're just throwing it to friends, just trying to show off how fast. You can throw it. It's just a pitcher's thing. Um, you know what? I want to. I want to see a game, man. Let's let's do six innings. Let's let's do pitcher's hand. Let's do the rules like wiffle ball. Let's get out there. Come on, guys. Baseball's everywhere. Hey, even if you're playing it on online, I play baseball on my Switch all the time. By the way, the oh god, the baseball on the Switch sucks. So I've been wanting to buy the PS5 for the longest time. Can I get it anywhere? I want to play MLB the Show. I had an Xbox forever before this. I played probably every single EA Sports baseball to when they started. And uh, I'm itching for baseball because the Switch baseball sucks, man. The base running, uh, the fielding, you can't even adjust your fielders. You can't do bring the outfield in or out. I mean, it's just a horrible game. It really is, but I, I still freaking play it every day because I need to get my fix. But let's move on to some other news. Braves coach, uh, Atlanta. Yeah, they're always going to be in the news. Braves coach and... And mentor to Austin Riley leaves town over vaccine mandate. So he's parting way with the minor leagues. The Atlanta Braves are parting ways with the minor league hitting coach Mike Brumley, who is credited with Austin Riley's development. And he's they're parting with him over vaccine or vaccine mandates. It's very controversial thing. There's people that don't want it. Um, but Mike Brumley, who's been with the minor league hitting coach since 2018, is reportedly leaving his post because he's refused the COVID-19 vaccine. And Major League Baseball and a lot of organizations are requiring it. My company does. And I am I work at home, man. So I work at home and I have to take it. So it's not, don't take it to heart. <laughs> that it's like, oh, I ain't going to take the vaccine mandate. Hey, man, we got a, we got a pandemic, guys. A lot of people are dying. I know some dear friends and family and coworkers that have lost friend, lost family members. It's no joke, guys. It's the real deal. But it just sucks how it's handled in some respects. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But this is an example. This guy's got to leave because he's not going to do it. Hey, I again, I work remote. I got my office right next to me. I had to give my vaccine card to keep my job. I work remote. My co- I'm in Oregon. My company's in Texas and Arizona. I never been in the office in my life. I was hired remote. I was interviewed remote. I've been working remote for this company. I've worked remote for years, but they require me. I'm never, ever going to go in the home office. They can't make me go in there. That's one thing about these companies. When you work remote, they can't force you to go, hey, you, you got to come in here. Now, they might pull the plug eventually and go, hey, we're all going to do non-remote. No, it's bullshit because companies save money by being remote, but... Again, it's one of those weird things is I get it. Like the truckers, all those 18 wheelers. I get it, man. I mean, it's stupid. And again, this is where people that are too scared to question power. This is what happens when they're in control. But if you're a trucker and you're going, man, I'm not even in an office. Just like me, I'm not in an office. But I can see why truckers get pissed. I mean, it's like, dude, they're they're the least. To me, I look at the risk level. Bars, restaurants. Costco's, you know, where people congregate concerts, that's stadiums, that's where we're going to have problems. But you never hear about problems in MLB. MLB and fans, you don't hear people going, oh, I went to MLB game, I got COVID. It doesn't happen. But, it, you know, I look at it the, the least risk. And to me, come on, man, truckers are way down there. They're, dude, they, they're in their trucks. They don't even come out of their... Seriously, when's the last time you've seen a trucker in your life at a bar? They don't drink because they got CDL licenses. CDL licenses, because I do insurance. When I 
help someone out with their insurance. I know they got a CDL license. I know they're legit, man. CDL licenses are hard. And when you screw up on that shit, man, it takes years to get that back. You can't drink. You can't have any drugs in your system. Honestly, people with CDL licenses are the best out there. And it just makes no sense. But we're not going to get on that. We're not going to get on that. We're not going to get on that. Yeah. Okay, that's all the singing I'm going to do. Let's move on to NCAA. But before I do, let's talk stadiums real quick, guys. Um, I'm from the West Coast, so I've been to um, a handful of stadiums. I've never been past Phoenix, Arizona in my life. I'm a born and raised San Diego brat, California brat. Uh, my family's been in San Diego 90 years, so I'm as local as you can get local. Uh, I know pretty much every inch of San Diego, all the little – I love the beach – spent the majority of my life at the beach. I'm a beach bum, but I never been past Phoenix, Arizona. I just have no desire to go to the East coast. I really don't. Other than baseball stadiums, there's nothing, there's not many places in the United States that appeal to me. Uh, Mardi Gras would be fun. Maybe a little Florida visit. Um, but I have no desire to go to New York for anything. Nothing against New Yorkers, but I'm not a city person. Put me in the forest, uh, with a tent and I'm cool. I like the outdoors. I don't like cities. I don't like all the crap that goes on with cities. Too much just negativity. Um, but what I'm trying to say is I just never... I've had opportunities. I might go to the Keys. I might visit Chicago. I would like to do Tennessee. I like to do Texas for barbecue. But I've never been far. So the only time I've ever been past Phoenix, Arizona is my company that I was working for years ago sent me to Denver, Colorado for training for two weeks. I went to a Colorado Rocky game. Great stadium. But let's start off with the National League West. When you talk about Dodger Stadium that seats 56,000, uh, that is Angels. It's a grass field. Oh, excuse me, that's the Dodgers. That's been there since 1962. It's a modern field, dead centers, 395 feet. I've been to Dodger Stadium. Uh, I've been there a couple times. It's a cool stadium. It's a big stadium. I did have a Dodger dog the first time I've been there. Of course I had a Dodger dog. It's a great experience. I love that stadium. Other stadiums in the National League West, like I said, Coors Field. I've been there. That seats 50,144. Denver, Colorado. It's a grass field. It's the Rockies since 1995. 415 to dead center. It's a retro classic type of stadium. That is a fun stadium. Again, I went there for one game. Uh, I was at a bar across the street on the rooftop uh, drinking music. It was fun. And there was a cornhole, cornhole contest, which I almost won. Some swag. But when I went into Colorado Stadium, that's a beautiful stadium. I had like a deer hot dog or what they call them. But it was a really good experience. I, I really like Denver, Colorado. I thought the fans were awesome. Good times. Um, Phoenix, Arizona. That's also in the National League West. I used to live in Phoenix for a couple years. So I've been to a ton of spring training. Used to go party down at ASU. Chase Field. Seats 48,405. That's Phoenix, Arizona. Artificial turf. That's the Diamondback Stadium since 1998. 407 to dead center. Retro modern stadium. Retractable roof. What's weird about that stadium. I've been to that stadium a bunch of times. Because I lived in Phoenix for three years. Is... Dude, it doesn't look like a stadium. It's a freaking building. It's a four-walled stadium. It, when you you can drive by it and not even see it, seriously, or not even notice it's a stadium. But it's a really kick-ass stadium. It's really impressive. I liked it. The food, just all the seats were really good. It's a really cool stadium, and I was lucky enough that I had a friend that I worked with that used to work there, so we went to a game together, and they showed me all these little neat things about the stadium. So I, I think Chase Field is a pretty cool stadium. Um... Another cool thing about it is it's just a block, two blocks down is I used to always go to Cooperstown. It's Alice Cooper, the rock star guy. He has his own little uh, rock restaurant. Always saw bands there, good food, cool little rock and roll setup. And you're like two blocks away from the stadium. So I'd go there, get my party on and walk on down the street to the stadium, go to Diamondback Stadium. But across the street from Cooperstown is you got their, uh, that's where their basketball and their hockey and their girls basketball play. So you Arizona is one of those, uh, Phoenix is one of those rare cities that has everything. They have professional football team. They have professional basketball, professional hockey. They have women's professional basketball, and they have major league baseball. So it's a sports person's town. But then again, uh, you're just sitting on your ass inside all day long and uh, in Arizona because it's too freaking hot. So it is what it is. Now, uh, I also went, 
I used to live in Northern California a while. I went to Oracle Park, which is 41,265. That's San Francisco. Grassfield, the giant stadium since 2000. Dead center, 391. It's a retro classic stadium. That is a bitchin' stadium. I've been a bunch of times there because I used to live in a small town called Santa Rosa, which is an hour north of uh, downtown San Francisco. And if you're local there, shout out to you right now. Please comment, you guys. Do me a favor as I'm going through these stadiums. Comment your favorite stadium. Give me a little story about what goes on at that stadium. Hook me up, man. I need more comments in my YouTube, so help me out, guys. Um, so Oracle Park is super fun. I've been there a bunch. When I lived in Santa Rosa, that's an hour north. Again, you drive south and you get to this town called Marin County. It's like the furthest you can go up the river uh, or up the river. Once you come in the San Francisco Bay and you go north, Marin County is like the furthest county you can go to, one of the furthest. You got Marin County Brewery. It's a great little area right there, right at the docks of the Larkspur Ferry. The Larkspur is the boat. If you ever watch San Francisco Giant Game, dead center to the right dead center. If you look over the wall, there's always this big old ferry. That's the boat. So you can get your party on at the brewery, walk across the street. They got a pedestrian bridge. Get on the boat. Continue the party on the boat. It's got upper and lower decks. I've met a bunch of people there that I'm still friends with to this day just partying on the decks. And then you get to the game. You walk in the game. They've got great food, great seating. Uh, I've got a great baseball story I'll tell you guys one day, but it's giant fans freaking love them, man. It was a great time. I went to a A's versus Giants game, Battle of the Bay. It's a great stadium. And then you just walk out of the stadium when you're done, get in the boat, and they drive you back to Marin County. And you just get a hotel in Marin County and have a good time, man. I'm telling you. Uh, Petco Park, uh, National League West, we're sticking with that right now, is uh, San Diego Padres, 40,209. Seating capacity. Obviously, in San Diego, California, grass field, the Padres since 2004, dead center, 396, retro modern stadium. And, of course, I've been there more times than I can count. I've sat in every part of that stadium, every inch of it. I've wandered that stadium so many times. I probably know it better than employees. I was there when they were doing the implosion of buildings. When the Western Metal Supply building that's in left field, there was a bunch of buildings around that because that was all old San Diego. I remember going to the parking structure across from the current Petco the trolley parking structure and watching the implosion so i was there before they even built the stadium uh, we prefer jack murphy a lot of the traditional hardcore party fans don't call jack murphy the q but they've torn that down that was the Padres old park but peco park they did a really good job with it that is a fun park i rarely sit in my seat i wandered there's so much to do there there's all types of bars clubs uh food galore music there's just it's a fun freaking park man uh, that is a park you can literally walk around in circles all day long. And if you guys go to our uh, YouTube channel, I posted a video. I went and walked that stadium uh, when I went down there last year. So go check that out, man. Go support me on my YouTube channel. But let's jump into NCAA. We're going to start off with women's. Women's, we're going to go over the top 25. Um, one thing that recently happened is Missouri at Missouri.Rivals.com. Perfect finish, a perfect weekend. Mizzou tournament. They were 4-0. They went. They scored 42 runs, gave up three, and they were perfect during the tournament. And then in other news, because each day was something different. Uh, Wednesday, number 19, Michigan was upset. Oklahoma, Jocelyn Allo still have still at 95 career, and Minnesota walked her the other day three times. So uh, she's trying to. She's currently tied for the record for career home runs at 95 and it's been a little over a week and it's just it, that's the big news right now in ml you know in uh college division one softballs her breaking the record but that whole team's loaded um they're very loaded man so let's go through the rankings um these rankings are recently updated so let's start off of course come on who's gonna guess All right, top eight, spo top eight spots hold steady in the D1 softball rankings. Northwestern breaks back into the top 10 after a 5-0 weekend, and Oklahoma State drops three spots at number 12 to make room for the Wildcats. Number 10, Missouri, and number 11, Washington. Oregon moves up to number 13 ahead of number 14, Kentucky, and number 15, Michigan. 
Charlotte entered the rankings at number 25 after going 5-0 with wins over number ranked 5 Virginia Tech, Maryland, and Villanova. The 49ers replaced Louisiana, which dropped from the poll after a 2-2 two two weekend. Charlotte's arrival gives the ACC two ranked teams. The SEC continues to lead the way with 9. The Pac-12 has 6. The ACC has 4. The Big 12 and Big 10 have 2 apiece, while the Sun Belt has 1. Oklahoma, they're going to be hard to beat. They're undefeated 15-0. There's... Nothing's changed in the top eight. The rankings stay the same. So it goes number one, Oklahoma, two, Alabama, three, Florida, four, Florida State, five, UCLA, six, Virginia Tech, seven, Duke, eight, Arkansas. Stays the same. Where everything gets shooken up is Northwestern, like we talked about. They were 11th. They moved up to nine. Um, Missouri, they went 4-0 this week. They were 12th. They moved up to 10. Washington went from 11 to 10. Oklahoma State dropped from nine to 12. Oregon moved from 15 to 13. Kentucky stays idle at 14. Michigan, they went 5-1 and one this week. They went from 16 to 15. Tennessee, 6-0 and oh this week, so they went from 16 to 17. Clemson, 1-3. and three. They went from 13 to 17. Bad week for Clemson. Uh, Georgia, undefeated. They went from 19 to 18. Auburn went from 20 to 19. Arizona went from 18 to 20. Hey, hey. I don't know how you go up when you go 5-0 and during the week. And LSU went from 22 to 21st. I don't know how that works. You know, Arizona, you go 5-0. and I know how it works, guys. I'm just saying. Um, Florida was 23 last week. They're 22nd. Oregon State was 25. They're 23. Charlotte, they weren't ranked. They come in at 24th. And Arizona State, they were 24th. They went up to 25. So that is our rankings for the women's softball. A lot of good games going on today, guys. Check it out. Let's jump on over to uh, men's. Men's was great. Men's was really great. Um, a lot of upsets in the men's this week. And I'm going since last Tuesday to this Tuesday, guys. So I'm not going to get you all the upsets or all the information, but I'm going to try to go through each day. Again, there was a lot going on. A lot going on. So let's start off with last Wednesday. Now... We've been talking a lot of Tommy Tanks and the Wild, um, the Wolf Pack, but things got ugly for them. So let's start off with Wednesday, number eight, Wolf Pack. They were upset by Campbell. This was unfortunately uh, the undoing for them for the week. Wolf Pack were ranked eighth. They got upset by Campbell. Ty Cummings, three and two thirds inning, and George Ferguson, two and two thirds inning. Three hits and one earned run. They faced 24 batters, those guys. And it was the first inning or so the Wolfpack looked scary. But then they got shut down by the Camels. You're number 8th eighth, eighth ranked team. Not good. Now, this is a theme through the last seven days. A lot of big, big teams lost. I mean, Thursday there was a few games, uh, you know, out of the West Coast. But Friday, Maryland loses to unranked. 21 ranked Maryland loses. And we're going to go over the top 25 after I go over these highlights. They lose to unranked Michigan Wolverines. In the Keith LeClaire Classic, hosted by East Carolina University at Clark LeClaire Stadium. First loss of the season. And the big news, and we just posted this on YouTube. Two sports star athlete, Joey Velasquez, Velasquez connected for a first at-bat of the year. Pinch hit three-run home run off the left field foul pole. He's, he's, he hit left-handed, so he hit it oppo. In the eighth inning, to break the tie of the game and give Michigan a 7-4 lead, in a high-level game involving two conference title contenders, the win marked number 300 for head coach Eric Bakish. Uh, Joey plays linebacker for the Wolverines. He never played over the last two seasons, over 23 at bats in three seasons. But he comes out and bashes one, man. Two-sport star, Joey Velasquez. Look it up, man. Um, the first two seasons, again, he didn't really do much for baseball. He was more of a focus on football for the Wolverines, but... He's never, last year he had 23 at-bats in a full season. So it doesn't really give a, a real, the last two seasons haven't really give a, a fair shake of what he's capable of doing. But hey, if he can play some games and show his talent, maybe he's something special this year. Then, coming into this game, they were ranked. Number 23, Sacramento State. They scored in every inning on this game on Thursday. Every inning except for the sixth. They had a 10 run Fourth, to claim a 21 victory, 21 to four victory over HBU 
in the series opener Friday afternoon at John Smith Field. Now, keep in mind, that's a blowout. Remember, don't blow it early, guys. Don't blow your water early. Um, keep that in mind because that's going to be a theme. And then Thursday, Wolfpack loses again to unranked Northwestern 6-1. What the hell? Wolfpack's a way better team than that. Tommy Tanks tanked. He hasn't hit anything since last week. Number three, Arkansas losing to unranked Southeastern Louisiana. They held number three. Dude, this is something before I finish. Well, I'm going to finish talking about it. They held um, They held them scoreless eight innings, but the Lions scored seven off of three different pitchers. So in other words, Arkansas held them scoreless for eight innings of the nine-inning game. But the sixth inning, the Lions scored seven off of three different pitchers and beat number three, Arkansas. Huge, huge upset. That one was huge. And again, this was happening a lot. LSU squeaks by Oklahoma 5-4. to four. Gonzaga upstate, upset number four ranked Oklahoma State. And Kentucky upset number 16 TCU. Tons of upsets, guys. I mean, teams that aren't even ranked. So there's going to be some shuffling. And I'm surprised there hasn't been that much shuffling. I mean, some teams moved around, but considering how many upsets there are, it's very interesting. Um... Saturday, again, Kentucky, again, beat number 16, TCU. Wildcats taking down the Horned Frogs. Houston Baptist beat number 23 ranked Sacramento State. So we were just talking about that, how Sacramento State blew them out. And all of a sudden, Houston Baptist comes back and beats them. They're not even ranked. And then Gonzaga, again, beating number four, OSU. Then Northeastern, again, beats number eight, Wolfpack. I mean, holy cow, the upsets that went on. And there was some ranked against ranked teams. Uh, Georgia, number 18, Georgia Tech beat number 15, Georgia 7-0. And then the Gators, number 14, beat 22, Miami. But uh, Tulane, the Green Waves, they beat number 9, Mississippi State. That was a huge game. I don't know, man. I don't know. And then UCF beats number 2, Ole Miss, one nothing, dudes. You beat, you're not even a ranked team, and you just beat Number two ranked team in the nation, one nothing, and you shut them out. And let's give a shout out: Connor uh, Stainand and Chase Centella combined to pitch a three hit, twelve inning shutout to even the series on Saturday against number two Ole Miss. Twelve inning shutout, two pitchers. Dude, that's crazy. UCF eight and two defeated number two Ole Miss nine to one, one and zero to hand the Rebels their first loss of the season. Boom goes the dynamite. And you know what? You know who's never going to be in the top 25 ever, no matter how much you beg? Yo, mama. Okay, Sunday. 23-ranked Sacramento lost again to Houston Baptist for the third game in a row. What the hell? And then ranked versus ranked, uh, you know, again, Georgia Tech. They lose to number 15, uh, Georgia. Northeastern beat Wolfpack. Yeah, complete a three-game sweep. The Wolfpack just folded in their tents. The Cal Bears. They beat 10th ranked Florida State. Texas State beat number 11 Arizona. Tulane gets, here's the funny thing is Tulane gets beat up in the first game against the series against number 9th ranked Mississippi State, but they take two or three. And then the one that just everyone was scratching their heads, UCLA beats number one ranked Texas Longhorns. Kelly Austin, the red shirt sophomore, five and a third innings, one earned run, three hits, 8K performance. Dude, Taking down the Longhorns. You're not even ranked. You take down the best team in the nation. And here's what's interesting about the Texas Longhorns. They're not in the top 10 in batting average, HRs, total bases, pitching ERA, or fielding. But they're just a good, solid team. Um, now, NCAA HR leader is not Tommy Tanks anymore, but Liberty University out of Lynchburg, Virginia, Derek Orndorff has 10 HRs. He's the man right now. He's the man. So, 10 HRs, college is going good, guys. That was a great week in baseball. A ton of upsets. And how's that put us with uh, the rankings? The rankings came out on the 6th. Okay, let's go over the rankings. There's no change in the top 6. So, Texas 1, Ole Miss 2, Arkansas 3, Vanderbilt, Vandy Boys, number 4, Stanford 
I don't know why Stanford's ranked at six or fifth. Uh, Oklahoma State six, and then what's interesting is Oklahoma is six, but they were fourth. Then ranked at seventh was Oregon State, which was thirteenth last week, so they jumped up. Florida State, which was tenth, they moved up to eighth. Notre Dame were twelfth, they moved up to nine. So there's been a lot of changes to these upsets. You can already see it in the rankings. Tennessee, they're seventeenth, they moved up to ten. Uh, Florida, who was fourteenth, moved up to eleven. LSU, that was seventh. They dropped to 12, as well they should. They didn't have a good week. Um, Georgia Tech, who was ranked 18th, jumped up to 13. Liberty, of course, man. Uh, they go from 20th to 14th. Carolina goes from 24 to 15. Arizona goes from 11 to 16. Not a good week for them. Texas Tech, 19 to 17. Tulane, not even ranked. They come in at 18. They had, a big, they had big games. I read that to you. Clemson, who's undefeated, they weren't ranked. They come in at 19. Georgia was 15th, drops to 20th. TCU, of course, they drop uh, from 16th to 21st. NC State, these are the ones that were hit hard. They were ranked 8th. Man, the Wolfpack, they're now 22nd. They went 8-4. They started 8-0. They're in the Tommy Tanks tantrum. But, man, losing 4 against, especially against an unranked team, that's going to drop you. Mississippi State, they're 6-6 six six on the year. They were 9th. They're now 23rd. They're going to be out. Uh, Maryland, 21st, now 24th. Gonzaga, not even ranked. Of course, they deserve an opportunity. They had a big week. They ranked 25, dropped out. Miami of Florida, Sacramento State, Long Beach State. Boom, goes the Dota Bird. So there you go, guys. That's your update. Now, if you want to know a little bit about hitting, uh, the home run leaders, again, Darren, Derek Orndorff of Liberty. He's an outfielder. He's got 10 home runs. Tommy Tanks, he's nine. Brad Malm of Albany, New York. He's got eight, and there's a bunch of dudes tied at number seven. So that's that's that. That's that. Now let's look at some batting average. Eh? Uh, batting 636 out of Central Connecticut State is Dan Covino. Tearing it up. But granted, it's only 11 at-bats. So let's get, I think I'd have to give it to Nathan Chong right now, St. Mary's, California. He's batting 630 in nine games. Uh, Jared Dickey of Tennessee's bands 565. Calvin Harris of Ole Miss. Catcher. Two catchers in the top four. Actually, there's four catchers in the top seven. <clears throat> He's banned 565. Calvin Harris, Ole Miss, uh, five, excuse me, 542, excuse me. Uh, Joel Hollerback, Cornell, tied at 542. Jack Hurley, Virginia Tech, 526. And McGuire Holbrook of West Virginia, another catcher, 519. And you even got uh, Ben Bia Bianco. He's further down the list, number 12, band 500, but he's a catcher. Kep catcher's represented, man. Kevin Parada, he's also on there at 480. He's a catcher. So some great hitting going on, guys. Great hitting. But uh, how about pitching? You guys want to talk a little pitching? Let's just let's go into strikeouts. For pitchers, uh, Bryson Mounts of San Diego, uh, 36. Mason Adams of Jacksonville, he's got 34. Bryce Hubert of Florida State's got 34. Thomas Arrington of Campbell, he's got 33, and a bunch of guys tied at 33. But earned run average, it's kind of really not. It's too early in the season to go over that because honestly, there's like 20 dudes with zero ERA. So a lot going on, guys. A lot going on. So anyhow, like I said, we're gonna cut this one short. Uh, that's your. We're gonna give you more and more information on college. We'll talk more stadiums in depth next time. We'll go over uh, the remaining five. Um, divisions. I just wanted to give you a taste of what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk a little bit more stadiums. But, you know, hopefully baseball gets their shit together. But otherwise, don't worry about it, guys. We're going to be bringing you everything with the ball and the stick. More college coming at you. So, again, please comment. Please support us. Thank you for following Baseball News Club. Have yourself a great day. Oh, uh, ball and play. <laughs>